Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing iron deficiency anemia. You can find all of our other anemia videos on our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Mad Medicine, where we have a Hemonk Step 1 playlist, and you can check it out there. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We like to post brand new videos for you guys every single day uh, for Step 1. So with that being said, let's start talking about iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency is the most common nutritional disorder in the world. It is number one, folks, number one. It is a microcytic anemia. Iron deficiency anemia is gonna present with a microcytic anemia presentation. And there are many, many causes, all of which you need to know for step one, and we're gonna be talking about today. Okay, so all of these are very high yield. You will most likely be tested on iron deficiency anemia in one form or another. So like we said, iron deficiency anemia is a microcytic anemia, the hallmark of which is a MCV that is gonna be less than 80. That is very important. Now, everything else is also going to be decreased in microcytic anemia. It's like hemoglobin, hematocrit, uh, your mean corpuscular hemoglobin, and MCHC, your mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, are all going to be decreased. So that is very important when it comes to uh, microcytic anemia. So you're going to have a decrease in many of the laboratory values for your blood. You're also uh, going to see very small red blood cells. That is what the MCV is telling you. Your mean corpuscular, the mean uh, volume in a red blood cell is going to be decreased. So what are the causes of microcytic anemias? Well, it's going to be any defect in hemoglobin production. So if you have a defect in hemoglobin, you are going to present with microcytic anemias. So this can be a defect with the heme uh, synthesis pathway or a defect in the globin chains themselves. So uh, in, a, in a, a heme defect synthesis pathway, that is where late stage iron deficiency anemia stays. It's going to cause a defect in heme production because it's very, very important for conversion of protoporphyrin to uh, uh, heme. Now that is what we're going to be talking about today. Keep in mind, everything we're discussing is going to be classified under the heme uh, synthesis defect uh, for microcytic anemia. Now, when it comes to iron, you need to know a few things. Iron is very important for heme synthesis because it allows for protoporphyrin to become heme via binding to protoporphyrin. It is mainly absorbed in the gut via the gut macrophages, and it's found in two ways. You have heme iron that's pretty much found in meat and is easily absorbed, and then you have non-heme iron, which is found in the Fe2 plus state, and uh, it is aided by vitamin C. And iron is always bound to a protein in our blood in order to prevent um, uh, free radical formation. Now this is protoporphyrin. When it gets bound to iron or when iron gets bound to protoporphyrin, I should say, it becomes heme. So this is a molecule of heme right here. And that is why iron is so important. In late stage iron deficiency anemia, you're going to present with a decreased heme synthesis because you cannot carry out the step in your uh, mitochondria. Now, the stages of iron deficiency anemia are very important. Number one, you're gonna have a depletion of your storage iron uh, st uh, amount. So inside your cells, right? So let's just write this down. This is gonna be an intracellular issue first. So inside your cells, your, your iron is stored with a uh, protein called ferritin. You're gonna have a decrease or depletion of your intracellular stores, which mean in lab findings, you're going to see a decrease in ferritin and an increase in total iron binding capacity. What that means is because you have lost your intracellular stores, your body is going to say, oh no, we need to replenish them, and it's going to signal for TIBC, aka transferrin. Remember, transferrin is the protein that allows for the transport of iron in our blood to our liver and bone marrow. It's going to cause that protein to increase in order to bring more iron to the cells themselves. So that is what's happening early on. Now, what ends up happening as the disease progresses and you become more deficient in iron is that your body is going to end up taking out pretty much all of the serum iron. It's going to deplete it, and then it's also going to be depleting its own storage iron because it's going to be used. So the second stage is going to be depletion of serum iron. And when you run out of serum iron, it's going to present in our labs with a decrease in your serum iron, serum iron amount as well as your percent sat. Your percent saturation is just telling you what percentage of your transferrin proteins are saturated or bound to iron. So if you don't have enough iron in your serum, you're not going to be able to bind them to transferrin, and that's what it's going to present. Now, early on, you're going to have a normocytic anemia. That makes sense because you still have iron in your serum that can use 
that can be used to produce red blood cells and hemoglobin. But in this case, you're just going to produce less red blood cells. That's what's happening. It's going to be normocytic. And then in the late stages, you're going to have the microcytic hypochromatic anemia. And that's because you have pretty much depleted yourself of all the iron you really have available to make these red blood cells properly. And the bone marrow is going to then make less and abnormal red blood cells, which are going to be microcytic and hypochromatic with the MCV that is going to be less than 80. So what causes uh, iron deficiency anemia? Like we said, there are several causes. You need to be well aware of all of them and what is happening with those processes in order to be prepared for step one properly because iron deficiency anemia is so common. So the first cause is going to be malnourishment and malabsorption. This is probably the most common cause of iron deficiency deficiency anemia because all of our body uh, all the iron in our body is absorbed right so if you can't uh, absorb iron or if you're not intaking enough iron you're not going to have uh, proper iron stores your body isn't producing anything therefore you will have iron deficiency anemia so uh, what the main problem is happening is either going to be a lack of intake of iron or a lack of absorption in the GI tract so an intake issue can be diets. If you're eating a diet that lacks meat, fish, or beans, anything that has, sorry, anything that has less iron, you will have iron deficiency anemia, as well as breastfeeding. Human milk does not have as much iron as other mammal milk, so it can also lead to a, a slightly decreased um, iron stores in a child. Now, when it comes to absorption, there are several issues that can occur at the duodenum where iron is absorbed. You can have problems with just absorption like celiac disease. You, if you have a gastrectomy or if you remove part of your stomach, you're going to have a decrease in proton uh, concentration, and that will lead to more Fe3 plus iron. Recall Fe3 plus is not normal, and when it binds to hemoglobin, it makes something called methemoglobinemia, which is not good. So you're going to have more Fe3 plus and less Fe2 plus iron that is usually needed. And finally, one of the most important things you need to know for step one is that infections with hookworms like Necrotor americanus and Ankylostoma duodenali can lead to iron deficiency anemia. And I'm going to put a huge red line. Oh, let's take that out. I'm going to put a uh, huge red line next to it in order for you guys to understand that this is uh, a very, very high yield uh, topic. This is very important for step one. Hookworm infection will lead to iron deficiency anemia. And in order to help you guys remember, let's draw a little tiny worm right here really quickly. And just keep in mind that these are going to bind in your GI tract and lead to absorptive defects. And this is your spinal little worm, but it has a little hook in it. Boom. So this is a hookworm. All right, so just keep that in mind. Those are going to be your uh, specific nutrition, malnourishment, and uh, malabsorption causes of iron deficiency anemia. You can also have iron deficiency anemia if you're losing blood. And when do you lose blood? In bleeding disorders, right? So if you have chronic or acute bleeding occurring, you can have iron deficiency anemia. So loss of blood is going to lead to an iron deficiency anemia. And this is most likely going to be seen in females who are going through menorrhagia uh, and who will just have normal day-to-day uh, -day, uh, periods, right? The normal period cycle will have them lose blood, and that's going to present it with patients who are adult females, 20 to 50 years old. And if they have really high bleeding, really heavy bleeding during their cycle, then definitely they can have iron deficiency anemia. That is very, very common in females. Now, you can also have peptic ulcer disease in males. And uh, in adult males, this is one of the main causes of bleeding that occurs. So menorrhagia or just periods in females and peptic ulcer disease in males right? And then GI surgery is going to lead to acute bleeding, can lead to acute bleeding, I should say. And because of that acute bleeding, you can lose enough blood to lead to an iron deficiency anemia, as well as colon cancer. This is very high yield. This is very high yield. Why is it high yield? Because a lot of times patients will complain of uh, bleeding and being tired and fatigued and all these non-specific symptoms. And the only thing that's really going to be abnormal is going to be the fact that they have an anemia. Everything else is probably normal. They may not have peptic ulcer disease. They're probably completely uh, healthy. So what could be one of the causes of this iron deficiency anemia? Colon cancer. And one important thing to understand for step one and just in general 
for your career in medicine is that adult males and postmenopausal women must be evaluated. They must be evaluated for colon cancer if they present with iron deficiency anemia. You have to rule out colon cancer in order to protect the patient. That is very, very important. You can also see iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy and with the use of oral contraceptive pills. So in pregnancy, a female is going to have an expansion of the blood volume and a slight increase in hemoglobin mass. That is what's happening. Now, overall, this is going to cause a decrease in the hemoglobin levels, which leads to anemia. And also, you can have an increased demand of the red blood cells by the fetus because the fetus needs oxygen. Normal fetal lung development doesn't happen until the very end. So it needs oxygen from the mother, and it's going to have an increased demand for the red blood cells. And that's going to lead to an anemia in the mother. Now, you can give prenatal vitamins like iron and folate for neurotube defects, folate specifically for neurotube defects in um, pregnant females. Just keep in mind that when you give folate, you want to give it preconception uh, uh, um, pre before they're trying to conceive. You definitely want to give folate because it's very important for early development of the fetus. So in order to prevent neurotube defects, you can give folate. You can give uh, iron as well in females. Now, oral contraceptives don't work like pregnancy. They actually cause a false increase in plasma transferrin levels. Why is that? That is because of the estrogen effects of oral contraceptives. You're going to have an increase in plasma transferrin. Now, this is overall going to lead to a decrease in percent saturation and a low ferritin levels. This is not a real anemia. When you take an OCP, you're not actually anemic. Your hemoglobin levels are not actually decreased, and this is not a proper type of uh, uh, microcytic anemia with the decreased red blood cell production and the decreased MCV, it is just because you have increased plasma transferrin levels. Now, when it comes to iron deficiency anemia, you should be well aware of the clinical presentation. Most likely, patients are going to have very non-specific symptoms like generalized weakness, fatigue, headache, and shortness of breath, right? And this all makes sense because they're not going to have proper uh, oxygen delivery throughout their body because they don't have proper amounts of hemoglobin. Now, in the physical exam, you're going to see pica, which is going to be when patients eat uh, non-nutritious uh, foods like like uh, uh, ice chips for no reason, they just have a, a, a craving for it. You're going to see conjunctival pallor, which just means this pale conjunctiva right here. You can see the conjunctiva is pale. If you look at your own conjunctiva, it's going to be more so pink than pale. You're also going to have something called uh, cholinachia or cholinachia, whatever. This is just some uh, spoon nails. That's what they're called. So in chronic patients who have chronic iron deficiency anemia, their nails are going to look like a spoon. They're going to have this uh, concaved inward appearance to their nails. Obviously, that is not normal. That occurs in very, very pathologic uh, um uh, states of iron deficiency anemia. And one big thing to understand is that iron deficiency anemia is associated with plumber vincent syndrome. In this syndrome, patients are going to have a beefy red, red tongue and esophageal webs like right here. This is the esophagus. This right here is the web that is in the esophagus. And these patients with plumber vincent syndrome are also going to have iron deficiency anemia. This is a hallmark uh, presentation right here for uh, plumber vincent syndrome, so you should definitely know that. Okay, so we're going to talk about now lab findings. So in your CBC, uh, you're going to have a decrease in your MCV and all other values like hemoglobin. When you do iron studies, you're going to have a decrease in your serum iron because you have depleted iron. This is specifically in late stage. You're going to have decrease in ferritin. You're going to have an increase in total iron binding capacity because you want to have more TIBC. You want to have more transferrin to try to bind to whatever iron is in your body in order to bring it back. And you're going to have high free, uh, free erythrocyte protoporphyrin levels. Now, when it comes to a blood smear, you're going to have a high red cell, uh, red blood cell distribution width. The reason why is because you have a microcytic anemia. Now, not all the cells are going to be very small, right? So when you look at the red distribution width of the red blood cells, you can have some very small red blood cells, and then you'll have some normal-sized red blood cells as well. That is going to increase your red cell distribution width. And then you're also going to have patients who will present with microcytic anemia in their blood smear, which are going to have a hyperchromatic red blood cells. Again, they can be normal chromatic, but often in microcytic anemias, they're going to be hypochromatic 
uh, uh, red blood cells. And this is what a red blood cell uh, smear uh, or a peripheral smear looks like in patients who have uh, iron deficiency anemia. As you can see, you have these red blood cells right here. These red blood cells are obviously smaller than the normal red blood cells should be. And if you look around, you have an increase in RDW because you have some abnormal shapes right here and right here and right here. So you have a different change in, uh, so you have a change in the size of red blood cells from, uh, from the normal baseline size that we have. Also keep in mind that these are hypochromatic. They don't have a lot of color to them, right? And uh, that should clue you into iron deficiency. Anemia. Now when you're treating anemia, you want to first exclude all other causes of anemia like colon cancer and menorrhagia. You want to make sure, especially for colon cancer, that patients who present with iron deficiency anemia don't have colon cancer. Very high yield, very, very important. Highly, highly recommend you guys don't forget this. Now, the treatment for this is very, very simple. Luckily, because you don't have enough iron and you're not taking enough iron in your body, you're just going to supplement it with uh, ferrous iron. Okay. Now, one thing to say, if you can't treat the underlying cause, if it can't be excluded, right, uh, you have to treat the underlying cause before you can say it is idiopathic or primary iron deficiency anemia. And then treatment, like we said earlier, is going to be ferrous sulfate, a.k.a. you are simply going to give iron to patients who have iron deficiency anemia. That is everything you need to know for iron deficiency anemia. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you guys understood a good amount. Again, spend some time with it. This is a buttload of information. There's a lot of stuff in this video, so I highly recommend you guys spend some time with it, go through it properly. And with that being said, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. You can follow us on Instagram at, at mad.medicine and on Twitter at It's Mad Medicine. And if you guys didn't know, you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.